I'm Mel Stewart, and this is a Swim Swam podcast. Joining me is Coleman Hodges, Swim Swam had a production, and the man on deck at all your swimming meets. And today, we have a very special guest. We have a power player in swimming, two-time Olympic medalist, 28 major international medals won, 12 world records broken, uh, Team USA national team captain, 2013 to 2015, Jessica Hardy. Hello, hello. Quite the intro. You're a pro with this. This is awesome. I mean, you know, we just, we want to do justice. We want to put it all out there, get it all out in the intro so people know who they're talking to. And, uh, you know. I feel like I can run through a wall now. I'm ready. <laughs> um, you know, what's, what's, what's interesting is like when the first time I ever met you, I was like, wow, this, this, is a, this is a fit woman who is, can, can put it down in the pool. And I was thinking personally, I think she could beat me up. Like you just, you're like so fit. I was like, God, man, I just, I feel like a wimp compared to you. <laughs> no, I mean, I am strong for sure, naturally, but I couldn't do a twin or butterfly to save my life, literally. So I have a lot of respect for you as well. A that, ton of respect. You got the fast twitch fiber. It's, yep. uh, so what, what, here's the thing, right off the, right off the top, we, we, you know, just the, the, we, get the, we get the big metrics out there in, in front. In, in my research on you, you know, I didn't know that you, I didn't know how involved you were in sport. And I didn't know that you were involved in such a high level. I didn't know about your representation on the Olympic Internal Operations Committee, USA Swimming Steering Committee, and USA Swimming Athlete Executive Committee. And that's kind of a rare situation because over the years, frankly, a lot of, we, we know what our teammates are like on the national team and, and the smarter ones oftentimes serve. But uh, kudos to you. You know, what, what, what motivated you to step up and do that? And what was the experience like? Um, I mean, I, I, I was asked to be on it. So it was more just like I was honored to be asked. And on a personal level, I thought it was really important to kind of advocate for the needs and the, the support, the safety, the wishes of all the athletes. So I thought, you know, I was pretty well connected. I have a, a pretty good grasp on kind of what my teammates were doing at the time. And I was, I'm a social person, so I'm always in touch with people and kind of, I'm just thought it would be good to kind of just do as much as I can to stand up for what everyone kind of needed. But it was, it was done in 2016 and um, it was a short term thing. It wasn't a ton of work, not a lot of commitment, but definitely a big honor. And um, I hope that I made a difference. I think I was part of the influence to get fifties in um, at Pan Packs. So that was, what I'm most proud of. Yeah. That, that's some serious power. <laughs> that's some serious power. Swim fans yes. love you for that way to <laughs> undersell it. You should have just said, yeah, I went in there and like, I, it was a lot of I was banging your fists on the no. table. <laughs> yeah. Right. The you coaches were, you didn't, you coaches, said, I, I would laugh me out of the room. I was expecting a, you know, a, a, a big political blow up story and you just come on. And, <sighs> <laughs> no, no. Well, um, it's pretty mellow. Well, I mean, You've been there too. It's just a bunch of coaches just catching up and talking about the future of the sport. No big deal. Okay, but before I, 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 Coleman takes over and just hogs all the time for himself, I do have to say this so that everyone has the full scope of, 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 of who you are. I think, it's, I think that something that was very telling about you is I remember years ago at Golden Goggles, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a function where we get together and everyone celebrates all of our, our, our best and brightest and everyone's dressed up, it's black tie, and people are in, in beautiful gowns, and I see you, and I don't know what I was doing, but I was probably just jumped off the, the, the starting block, and started talking about business, and you said, stop. Mel, how are you? How is your family? <laughs> oh. And I felt like an asshole. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You're the Texan Southern gentleman over there. No, I mean... I just care. I care about people. I like to talk and connect with people. It means stuff to me. So at Golden Goggles is so cool because it's the one place where nobody's stressed about competing, you know? So usually when we're all together, it's business, but that's the one time where it's like, 
how are you actually doing? What's new? You know, and catching up with you is always such a good conversation. I had to, I couldn't let it slip away. And, and one last thing. Sorry, Coleman. One last thing. Sorry. No <laughs> just, it, we, we're, we're, we're going high level here. This is just, you know, if, 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 if folks are not, if they, if, if they don't know Jessica Hardy, shame on them. But if they, you know, if, you know, they might not know everything. You're, you're, you're engaged in swim and a lot of athletes, uh, you know, I, I think of BJ Bedford, who's an Olympic champion, Maritza Correa, uh, Olympic medalist. And they, they, they dovetailed from swim into the business side of swim. And that's not always easy to do. You've done that with BSN Sports. BSN Sports is a billion dollars plus in sales a year. They're making strong uh, inroads in the swimming market. And you're working with them and, it's, and it's, you've been a crucial part of their success because they've been coming on strong. What, what do you do with BSN? And why, why did you accept this position? Thanks. It's been fun. Um, I didn't know who BSN Sports was. You know, like most athletes, they're like a middleman where they are really successful in the high school industry, but um, they they basically are, they work with all the suit manufacturers and help with teams who don't have a direct deal. Um, or if they do, they help kind of, you know, fix the, the interim party as well. Um, but it's a suit manufacturing apparel and equipment company. And it's a huge company, mostly football, baseball, basketball, and they decided to focus on swimming about two years ago. And um, they asked me to do a clinic at my high school, really easy, convenient for me. And Mel, I think you even suggested my name for that, which I'm eternally grateful for. And it went great. And they asked me to come on full time. And um, I had to kind of learn more about the company. And uh, it's been fun. We have grown the swimming division to over an $11 million category. And I work kind of in between sales and marketing. So I get to have a little bit of fun with marketing and put my business hat on for sales. And um, I kind of just do whatever they need me to do um, to help the company and help the, the swimming category specifically grow. But um, I think the future is exciting and bright and I really am loving being involved in the sport um, from the dry side. I don't, I don't have any desire to be getting in the water for morning practices or spending a lot of time at swim meets anymore, but I still have so much love and passion to help the sport grow and continue to, you know, reach its, its full potential. And especially coaches, a lot of them are people I swam with now because I'm older and it's just fun to kind of catch up and stay involved and keep talking to people that I grew up with, you know, so I'm living the dream. It's a blast. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to jump in with some more, some more swim nerd stuff. I want to hear about a little bit about your background and swimming career uh, you know, you talked about you, you get to reconnect with people you swam with, people from your high school. Um, I know you were the like high school swimmer of the year, I think, in 2004 and 05. What was your high school swimming experience like uh, being, being that elite of an athlete? Um, I started swimming with Dave Salo on the Irvine Nova Aquatics in my sophomore year of high school. Before that, I'd been like a water bowl player, spent a lot of time kind of just messing around and having fun. And I spent a lot of time in the water with water polo, but when I started swimming with Salo, I quit polo and just focused on swimming. And I did both high school and club, like trained with the high school team and the club team. So I was in the water a lot, of, a lot of hours, you know, and I was in the water a lot with polo too, like up to eight hours a day for that. So um, it wasn't always hard, you know, it's kind of goofing around and having fun with your friends. Even with Salo, he's not a high intent, he's not a high yardage guy. So it was hard, but you know, I never was swimming 10 million, 200 butterflies like Mel. It was just kind of like a 75 at a time, you know, or 25 at a time. Um, and I loved it. It was fun. And my junior year I made, oh, my junior year Olympic trials were in my hometown of Long Beach. And I was the only qualifier to live in Long Beach. So I got to swim in some like celebrity relay and stuff as a high school kid. And I think that boosted my confidence that, you know, maybe I can actually you know, deserve to be in that spotlight a little bit, maybe. And I actually made the final and got fifth place, which totally blew my expectations out of the water. And the next year I made the national team um, as a senior in high school and I broke a world record that year too. So it was a mental game for me. Once I believed in myself, I was there. And, you know, I, I just had fun on the way and played a lot of, you know, 
tag with my friends and warm up and socialize the whole time. But I like to race. I like to go fast and I don't like to lose, you know, in Salo's environment at the time had a lot of Olympians in the group and I didn't want to be embarrassed every day in practice. So just tried to keep up and it worked out, but yeah, I, I, I did swim high school too. So I practiced with my high school team, which isn't usually that common for people on the national team to actually practice with their, with their high school team. And, um, if for me, I'm still best friends with my people, my friends from high school. Like we still are, I'm hanging out with them this weekend, you know, like very close friends. And that was more important to me. It's just maintaining the friendship and the relationships. And it was really fun. It was kind of like the no pressure type of environment where you just want to win. And I swam a lot of off events, like 200 AM, 500 free, you know, a lot of weird stuff. And some of my best times are still from high school because I was just swimming for fun and didn't, didn't care. Um, but yeah, it worked out. I broke the, the minute barrier. I was the first person to break a minute in the hundred breaststroke yards, um, in high school and got swimmer of the year, both my junior and senior year. So it was, I think when you're having fun, it's easy to swim fast. You know, that's the moral of the story. I was going to jump in here because I, and I think you answered the question. What is the longest, you know, have you done 500 free? Have you dropped some 400 AMs? Have you, have you, have, did you ever swim the mile? No. I have not swum the 400 AM or the mile or the 200 fly um, ever, and I never will. Shame, shame, no. shame, shame. I, that you, you came through the hollowed halls of, of the swimming community without swimming those events, and I have, yep. I'm, there's all sorts of judgment happening right now. I'm sorry. I know it's just because you're jealous, because that's, <laughs> that's truly, I think, the, the bottom root of the problem. But no, I think I grew up as a sprinter. I swam on the Natadors as a kid, so they're a distance team, and I – did terribly and they tried to make me do all that stuff and I was about to quit the sport but um found water polo and that's kind of my way of avoiding it so I was able to you know continue sprinting and having fun that way and then I got good enough at my good events to never have to swim the the terrible events thank goodness (laughs) not terrible the difficult the the uh respectfully challenging (laughs) events I have a lot of respect (laughs) <laughs> I think <Sorry>. everyone <laughs> I think everyone listening who who swims at 200 and up is jealous right now. I, Sorry, I don't guys. think it's just Mel. Um, I mean that sounds like the life, right? You you were playing water polo, you're doing tag during warm-ups, you're having fun. I mean, honest in my opinion, this is how this is what swimming should be, right? I agree with you, yeah. Um, we were t- I mean, I never graduated from the summer league stage like I'm still a summer league kid right now. <laughs> And I don't think you should have to, you know? <laughs> I totally agree. We were talking to Missy Franklin and her husband Hayes just the other day and, and about Summer League. And her husband Hayes swam on his Summer League team until he was 18. And uh, That's awesome. I, I think everyone should be doing that. Yeah. Um, did, did, were you always so versatile? Did you always swim breaststroke and freestyle? And no, I, 50 fly. Didn't you win a medal in that somewhere? Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. But um, no, I was not versatile. I was a breaststroker and I was forced to swim the 200 AM. Um, I'm pretty good at fly free and breast. Backstroke, I am a turtle that just like just sinks there, you know, on my back. So 200 AM, I never was going to be like world class at it. But most breaststrokers have to swim that as their event. And I'm okay. Like I, I can keep up. Um, but I, I loved sprinting and I think that, you know, as long as it's not backstroke, you can throw me in any 50 or 100 and I will not want to lose. So yeah, the 50 fly thing, I got fourth at Pampax one year. That was fun. I was bummed I didn't medal. Yeah, that was it. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading it right now. It's like, buddy, here's the thing. Everyone says that, you know, uh, if you, if you have, you know, if you can catch a ball, you played water polo, if you're a real athlete and you have that fast twitch fiber, a sprinter is a sprinter. It's a sprinter. They can move their hands. They can move their body through the water fast. But yeah, you did it. Wow, you won. Looking back at 2010 Pan Pax, four medals. It's uh, it must be nice to feel so much speed. Yeah, yeah, it was. I don't have it anymore, so it's okay. I'm I'm normal now. <laughs> What's your but, vertical leap? Have you ever measured your vertical no, leap? No, I wish I did. No. Um, I have short legs though. I'm powerful and I can squat heavier than my husband could in his peak. Um, and he was, you know, sixth place in the Olympics, like not shabby, but, um, I don't know how good my vertical was. That's a good question. Jessica married 
outside of the United States team, which was which is regrettable. But her husband oh. Dominic is a three time a three time Olympian, Swiss Olympian, and we love him too. He's he's a, he's part of the family. But uh, that's that's pretty exciting. You, you guys got you have some great genes going on. Are you are you guys yeah. thinking swimming? What what, what are you going to do with your kids? Um, with Dom jokes all the time. He's like, you know, we bred our kids, right? Like I selected you to breed my kids. And I'm like, that's not funny. Cause if I was choosing, I would have chosen like Grievers who's six, eight, you know, like <laughs> if I was thinking like that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sorry, bud, <laughs> I married for love, but <laughs> no, our kids are, are athletic and coordinated already. We're, we have a two year old who started walking at nine months and I have an eight month old right now who is taking, he took his first steps in the bath eight months old last night so it's coming in hot um they're in swim lessons covid situation is a little bit weird but we'll see what they chose i just hope that they find something to be passionate about um because i think athletics will be easy for them it's just kind of making sure they stay healthy and not have pressure from both of their parents being olympians and we'll see let, let, let me let me bring it back to swim and and uh and Coleman, you can you can go further back. I just I think it's interesting. I mean, it's it seemed like not a lot of athletes, but uh, increasingly athletes have done their time in college. They got that NC two A experience, and they turn pro. And you turn pro. You turn pro after two years. Um, talk talk us through that decision. Paint the picture. What was you know what was going through your head? Did you know what you did? Did you know that when you went to school? Um, you know where was your Good head at? Question. Very good question. I think um, I had been exposed to a lot of professionals in high school on Nova Aquatics. There were 20 in the twenties of amount of Olympians that I was training with as a high school kid and seeing them go to photo shoots and like the lifestyle was fun, you know, and I saw the potential in the sport um, that kind of just kind of excited me. And um, I went to Cal for two years and I won four NCAA titles and um, really enjoyed the team environment you know, loved relays. I still, relays are the best part of our sport, in my opinion. And um, I feel like I got the full experience, but I wasn't doing any best times in my breaststroke. So I was increasingly frustrated um, on a personal level. And I knew that I had to kind of take care of myself first and foremost, and put myself ahead of the team, you know, in that situation. And um, I did go pro and it was mostly because I couldn't, it didn't make sense for me to transfer down to um, swim with Salo at SC when he became the head coach because they had Rebecca Sony and like literally the best swimmer in the world in my events, you know, so, um, you know, I just went pro and decided to have fun with some photo shoots and see what that opportunity kind of allowed. It wasn't like a calculated thing, like where Missy knew going into college where she would swim for two years and then go pro. If for me, it was kind of like the timing makes sense. And I miss my old coach where I broke world records already. And, you know, I missed home for me. Southern California was an easy transition to come home and live with my parents and have them cook meals for me leading up to the Olympics. So it just was a comfortable thing and it worked out. Um, I'm glad that I went to college and had that team experience. It shapes who you are as a person for life. And I met my husband there, you know, and great experiences happened. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity and such a great school. And I also got the best of both worlds swimming pro and having a lot of fun doing that stuff too. So can't complain. What, what were some of your uh, fondest or most fun memories of going pro those first couple of years? Oh. You know, like, oh did, did you have a memorable photo shoot or did you get to, you know, go to world cups or, you know, some, some of the things that you get, like you talked about, you get to do as a pro. Yeah. I think I took advantage of pretty much every opportunity you can as a pro. I had a lot of really great mentors that I had swum with in high school, like Jason Lezak specifically, Aaron Pearsall, Amanda Beard. I trained with all of them and they kind of just included me in on whatever you know opportunities were happening in the sport. And this was before the ISL, you know, we didn't have a ton to do. There wasn't a lot of opportunities, but it was it was cool. We did the World Cups. I won the overall World Cup in 2009, um, where you're basically living out of a suitcase, you know, traveling to every continent except for the U.S. Um, for a couple months. And that's so fun with just the memories are crazy, you know, um, getting to like shark dive while we're in South Africa. Like I always tried to do cool stuff wherever we were. And, you know, there's 
a lot of the times swim, the swimmers from other countries are like legitimately famous in their home country. So there's pretty cool opportunities that they kind of allow you to do. Um, swimming with Kitajima was crazy going to Japan and he's having me on his TV shows and stuff. And, you know, Nobu, the chef is bringing out like $6,000 worth of sushi, you know, for free and sitting down and eating with us. And I'm like, he's like world famous, you know, like this is insane. Um, wait a but, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a lot stuff. of sushi in Southern California. I've had some crazy nights of sushi. That's like five, $600 dinners where uh, I've had some crazy sushi experiences in SoCal pretty good in Austin, but when you're, when you're, when you're eating sushi at that level, what's the difference? I mean, basically it's almost like, you know, it's, it's the down payment on a really swank car, but that's, <laughs> that's a high ticket. What's the difference? It's the taste. It's, you know, what, what is it? I don't know what I ate. I couldn't tell you if my life depended <laughs> on it, but it melted in my mouth. It was so good. It was the yeah. best, like softest. It was like a feathery fish, you know, it's like butter. It was yeah, butter. Yeah, exactly. It's delicious. And more so just the experience, like unlimited champagne and Nobu's bringing it out himself. And it's just nuts, like things that you don't experience in life ever. Um, and it's normal for Kosuke. He had like his private driver drop him off in his Bentley, you know, to go do that. And I'm like, okay, I'll tag along for this one. I knew they lived swank lifestyles and it was better. I knew that they were, you know, that there was fame and stardom and swim internationally. And, and I've, I've brushed up against it, but uh, if somebody got picked up by their driver or dropped off in the Bentley, I'd be, I might be a little bit bitter. I might be like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Someone's not doing their job. Where's my Bentley? <laughs> yeah. I think the, that is in our future. I have, I have belief that that will happen for future swimmers. Um, Phelps did a really good job making our sport really world class, and I'm great, so grateful for kind of the development of in my generation alone, the, the opportunities that swimmers have had and with the ISL, it's, it's, you can watch it on TV and it's interesting, you know? So I think, I think that will come and I'm really excited to watch it. ISL was designed just for you, but you're not, you're, but you retired. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe uh, come back out of retirement. No, no, no. <laughs> maybe my kids can do it. <laughs> I was, I was we'll about see. to ask the same thing. Are you a little bitter? That, uh, no. that that you don't get to be an ISL? No, not better at all. Like I'm so pumped for um, the athletes that get to do it. I'm just so like genuinely so happy for them. Um, but yeah, I would have loved to have competed in that. I would have enjoyed that very much. Have you, have you been to one of their matches? No, um, had a baby last fall. <laughs> I had a baby in Halloween last year. So I was supposed to go to a few of them with, with BSN. Um, and I just couldn't travel which was a bummer we hear somebody in the background who is it sorry <laughs> my daughter just popped her head in sorry <laughs> she can come on camera if she wants to okay Tom uh, took her away already <laughs> it's, it's a um so what coleman has coleman covered a lot of them he embedded for a period of time last fall and it, it what the fascinating thing is when you walk into that pool area it's walking into a television studio and uh I've spent a lot of time in television studios. People don't know this about me, but I grew up in a 24 hour television network city. And my dad, we were very immersed in this, in that world. And that was in the 1980s. But it, what struck me is it's a TV studio. This is an entertainment property. So you're going to have to get there somehow, some way and, and fully experience that because I think that, I think as much as you're a fan now, you'd be a huge fan if you were there in person. Absolutely. It's so cool. My best friends in the sport are some of the general managers now, Lizak and uh, Caitlin and Lenny. I swam with all of them. Caitlin, I still talk to weekly. Um, and Lizak, I talk to, I mean, I, I'm really good friends with all of them. So just to see their involvement and the difference they're making on the sport and getting the kind of behind the scenes updates of how much work they're putting into it is awe-inspiring. And it's something that I could not be more grateful for and for sure will be there as soon as I can. Okay. So I have one more swim nerd question. We kind of touched on this, you know, you said you're a sprinter, you just go fast in anything you're put into. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't think we've ever seen someone with the versatility you had, or at least a breaststroker where you started out really strong in breaststroke. And then later in your career, you just developed 
a a superb freestyle uh, to where you won trials in the hundred and the fifty in two thousand twelve and, and and was you know anchoring gold medal relays. Um, I've, you know, can you tell us about that shift and development uh, within your career? Yeah, I think freestyle developed for me when I got a little bit older. I was twenty one when I really started competing it on the international stage. Um, so kind of similar to like a, a guy where I needed time to develop the strength to be competitive in it. Um, I, I'm a petite girl, but I'm, I'm strong. Um, I'm, petite. I mean, I'm six feet tall, but I'm skinny. I'm not like Dara Torres where I have a big muscle mass. Um, yeah, six feet tall, petite, but yeah, <laughs> I'm just I mean, I'm calling you, calling yeah. you out. We have yeah. to be accurate. This is also a news platform. <laughs> okay. So for a sprint freestyler, I would say I was on the skinnier side. So I needed time to kind of develop that strength. Um, but for breaststroke, it just kind of was one of those things that as a kid, like my feet turned outwards, faced, you know, outwards, and I naturally was able to kick breaststroke. So that was easy. And I was a water polo player. Like everything comes back to my roots, you know, being a sprint freestyler and a breaststroker was what good water polo players kind of work on. Um, egg beater kick helped my breaststroke kick and sprinting freestyle up on head up freestyle to, to catch up with the ball was kind of hours and hours and hours of playing and repeating that over and over. Um, they just kind of married into those events for me. And um, it was easy. Like I, I, it was hard because nobody else was doing it and the schedule of events were never in favor of people who did those two events. So at a world championships in 2000, I don't know, 13, I think. Um, I literally had the final of the 50 breasts and the 50 free five minutes apart. And I was top seed in both at a world championships. And I won the 50 breasts and then I got eighth in the 50 free. And if I had had maybe 20 more minutes, I know I would have done better than that. So um, I'm frustrated, you know, sometimes by the lack of support around those two events being close together, but it was fun. Um, swimming stuff that nobody else I, I just had more friends you know in the ready room I I swam different events than most breaststrokers just swim I am or breast and they just know each other but I knew everybody because I swam everything but backstroke basically so it was fun you trained with Yuli Efimova so yes. did you just like did you own her and practice on a daily basis it's like I got you uh you you do this again I what, was like, what was that like I don't like to talk bad about people but there are no girls that I ever trained with that beat me in practice Yes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yes, that's what we wanted to hear. Um, well, here's the thing, and, 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 and hey, look, she, she, here's the thing. Some people train really well, and some people perform really well. Some people do both really well. Yes. Um, you know, it, but it's a unique situation when two stars uh, are together. So was, was that inspiring? Was it stressful? Was it fun? You know, what was that environment like? There were three of us. Rebecca Sony was in the group at the same time. One of the world championships, we swept the podium in the 50 breast. I got first. I don't remember who got second. Probably Rebecca was second and Julia was third. And we trained together every day. So we swept the podium, you know, as little teammates, which was fun. But it was intense. Um, being a breaststroker and a freestyler is hard because freestyle, you lead the lead and breaststroke, you're last in the lane. So I kind of always had to be on the side away from the middle of the action just because I needed the versatility space. Um, and Rebecca liked to swim distance events. So we were usually on opposite sides of the pool and then Yulia bounced around to whoever was doing what she wanted. And, um, yeah, we sometimes would all be at the end of the lane and, you know, we'd get up for time swims and look around and be like, oops, it's just the three of us that it's up here, you know, and we'd have to have like a Olympic final performance in practice. Um, and that happened probably weekly, um, yeah, we always were aware of what each other was doing and it was a huge motivator. I'm listening to podcasts and stuff about gymnasts where they, they had to perform about, you know, Olympic level every time they perform. And I think there's a lot to be said about that preparing you for, you know, stressful competitions way better than you ever could do without them. So it worked out. Did you like go to Starbucks afterwards? Or hang out? Was it how, Yulia's, how, how Yulia's English. Yulia's English isn't great, so we didn't really hang out. But um, Rebecca and I, yeah, for sure, we still have a ton of friends in common. And yeah, we're different people. She's a lot more soft-spoken and mellow, and I'm the loud sprinter. So not best friends, but we definitely get along great. What was, <laughs> was there... 
was there a memorable get up swim for the three of you? Uh, one that sticks out in your mind? There's thousands of them. We broke world records in practice, like literally. Um, yeah. I look back and I don't believe the stuff we've done. It's cool. Do you, do you, is there one? Could you tell us just one? Just one. Just one. Um, yeah, there was a few times that, I mean, at the end of practice, timed practice, timed uh, swims where you get up on the blocks. And there was a 50 breast where all three of us broke 30 in practice at the end of a really intense, probably 8K workout, you know? And that's just because we didn't want to lose. So that kind of stuff happened a lot. I mean, and that was like 10 years ago now. So you see people breaking 30 all the time now, but it didn't happen then, you know? I think like five people have broken 30 now. (laughs) I don't don't know. I get tagged on stuff on Instagram and there's a lot. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. It's cool. You're being modest. That's extraordinary. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really hard. So we're, we're down to about six and a half minutes. And we, 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 when, with someone with so many accolades, we shouldn't ask you this question. Right? We missed it with some, with some really big name athletes. Was, you know, is there a moment in time where you had a perfect swim and you're like, that was perfect? Or you felt amazing and it's just a memory that's crystallized in your brain? Um, no such thing as the perfect swim ever. No, it doesn't exist. I am convinced of it. Um, but the favorite race where I felt the best, and I'm so appreciative of that feeling, is um, 2000. Shoot, I'm blanking on the year. Barcelona Worlds. Do you remember 15. what year that was? 13, 15. 15. 13. Um, the 100 breast prelims. I hadn't swum breaststroke in, internationally in like two years because I swam freestyle at the Olympics the year before. And my prelim 100 breast, I was just kind of rusty and get out there and I flew. It just blew myself out of the water and I went like a 105.1 um, and it felt so easy and fast and coordinated and perfect. Um, but I messed up the finish, so it's still not a perfect race. But the feeling of that stroke is something that I am so grateful for. And when you got out of the water, you're like, that was painless? No pain? Yeah. Yeah. It just You almost feel like you're like flowing, like it just happened for you. You know, it's it's the best feeling. Breaststroke is like a golf swing. It's all underwater. You're pushing a lot of water. One thing goes wrong. The stroke is off. And uh, and I I, I don't think that people give that enough respect. uh, I've never heard that analogy. That's perfect. But it's it's, it's tough. I always room with breaststrokers. I didn't think much of them because it was breaststroke and it was slow. I was like, you guys are okay, whatever. But yeah. I was, it was always a joke. I always respected the breaststrokers because I, they had, it seemed like they had a lot of strength, a lot of agility, and I was, I was keenly aware of that. Is that something that worried you? You know, it's like, well, I could have a great season, but if something, you know, be totally conditioned, but if my stroke is off just a bit, everything goes haywire. For sure. Every breaststroker has that in the back of their mind that, you know, you could wake up and your timing is off. Um, something's off, just one little thing and the whole thing's doesn't feel right. Um, you know, when you have to power through it, breaststrokers, you just don't have time to worry about how you feel kind of, but, um, I am really grateful that I had freestyle to kind of focus on if my breaststroke was bad. Cause my gosh, it's so frustrating as a breaststroker to wake up and just have a tiniest little thing be off and it just doesn't work, you know? And every season I experienced a different stroke. Like Salo would always come to me and be like, your stroke is just a 180 from last year. And I'm like, well, <laughs> let's work with this one. You know, we got to refigure it out. But I did make the national team 11 years in a row, um, you know, and so I did figure it out. It just took – it's it's a mental game just as much as physical with breaststroke. It takes patience. So so you just said it changed so much. Was there one – you know, were you more of, of, of a pull-driven stroke? Or was it all kick for you? Did – you know, did it change throughout? I don't know. I – I was a speed swimmer more than that, more than anything else. So I think just high tempo and not wanting to lose. Yeah. My stroke isn't textbook. It's not beautiful. My kick is strong, but you know, if I'm doing a kick set, I get my butt kicked, but when it's in the stroke, it's, it's great. It was great. Um, You know, so I'm not like specifically outstanding at anything except for not wanting to lose. That's my, that's my answer, I guess. <laughs> we, we really missed a, 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 a we, 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 we skipped over something that was extraordinarily important. We can't end this without finding out because it's, it's going to be the most important part of this interview. You said you squatted more than Dominic. 
And, uh, and I would like to know what that was because we, we did squats in my day and I hated it, but you know, some people are powerful and some people aren't. What could, what could you squat? I don't remember. I genuinely don't remember. I'm so sorry. (laughs) I, Nick Fokker was my weight coach at Cal. He, uh, he's the world renowned swimming Olympic, uh, weight coach. So I'm going to have to reach out to him and get that answer for you. But I, I I thought specifically, go ahead. I thought thought his name was Fokker. I I've been pronouncing it the wrong way for years. I think it's the same thing. F-O-L-K-E-R. Yeah. It's so you don't know. I was guessing three, 300 pounds at least. But yeah. uh, I would have said in the 400s. I'm going to have to find out though. I don't know. That was what we were looking for. I wasn't sure. So is it free weight or were you pressing a uh, machine? Pressing is better than free weight. Um, I'll find out more factual info for you. I can't believe you don't have this answer for us. We need Sorry. To know. We're gonna I like, I'm the kind of person I don't remember my best times. I don't remember a lot of important information on purpose so that I don't limit myself. You know, I I like to kind of be ignorantly in a happy place and just kind of let my work speak for itself in a way. She just knows that she won. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I think that's important. We're down to about a minute and a half. Do you have any parting thoughts, anything that you would like to share a question maybe that we didn't, didn't cover that's obvious. I think let's talk about if it's okay to talk about COVID um, coming out of that. I think it's really important to remember why you joined the sport um, and remember the fun times and why the sport is, is so much fun for you um, and identify kind of how you can channel that in when, you know, especially right now in California, the pools are still closed and people are so frustrated and losing some motivation. I really hope that um, the opportunity comes soon to get back in the water. And I hope that it remains fun for people, not focusing on how far away they are from their goal times and their, um, you know, best times, really just enjoy racing your teammates and the process of playing in the water. Um, I really, I hope that I see that happening and I hope that we see Olympic trials still continue to have, you know, awesome duels. I don't care what the times are. I just, I'm really excited to see everyone racing and having fun. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.